Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Every day, the disaster on our southern border continues to get worse. This disaster is a true humanitarian crisis, and it is the result of deliberate political decisions by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that have inflicted unspeakable horrors on millions of illegal immigrants. 6.6 .6 million illegal immigrants have crossed illegally into this country since Joe Biden became president. And it is, in particular, done enormous damage to children. We're here today because the Biden administration has utterly failed. It has failed to secure the border. And it has encouraged parents to send their minor alien children on a dangerous trip to the United States unaccompanied. And it's failed to protect these children after they were let into the United States. The Democrats running this committee have also failed. As we're holding a hearing to discuss the issues facing HHS's placement of unaccompanied minors, but we don't even have a single official from HHS here to answer our questions. Javier Becerra should be sitting right in the middle of this panel, under oath, being forced to answer difficult questions about his absolute dereliction of duty when it comes to caring for these kids. But the Democrat leadership of this committee doesn't want Secretary Becerra to face those hard questions because it would re reveal his utter negligence and the children who are being harmed as a result. And so the absence of HHS is not an accident. It's not an omission they just forgot. It's a deliberate decision. Let's protect the Biden administration from accountability and concomitant with that decision is a decision to say the children being harmed are not important enough to the Democrat senators on this committee to overcome their partisan desire to play politics and protect the Biden administration from the consequences of their own failure. Take a look at this image. This image was captured from a video shot in El Paso on March 24, 2023 where a smuggler abandons a one-year-old child, a Guatemalan boy, on the riverbank. This one-year-old child has now entered the unaccompanied minor alien child system currently administered by the Biden Health and Human Services. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, approximately 127,000 unaccompanied minors entered the United States during fiscal year 2022. So one year, 127,000 kids all alone. 2021, again, according to HHS, 107,686 unaccompanied minors entered the United States. Compare that to the last year of the Trump presidency, where that number was approximately 30,000 a seven-year low. Now, let me be clear, even one child in the custody of human traffickers is horrific and wrong. But 127,000? This administration, no wonder Secretary Becerra is too scared to sit there. He should be embarrassed of that record. Health and Human Services received $7.8 billion last year just for unaccompanied minor children. Troublingly, on February 24, 2022, HHS admitted in a letter to Representative Andy Biggs that it could not contact approximately 20,000 minor children it placed in 2021. In one year, 20,000, it just lost them. No wonder Secretary Becerra is not sitting at that table. On March 22, 2023, Senator James Lankford pressed Secretary Becerra on a portion of the New York Times expose indicating that HHS had failed to account for 85,000 previously placed alien children. Becerra disputed the question, saying it was unrealistic, but he failed to offer any concrete evidence or data or statistics. 
On April 25th of this year, I joined Senator Marco Rubio and my colleagues in a letter addressing HHS failures on this score, which actively highlighted the fact that the Biden administration loosened vetting, fired HHS staffers who filed complaints, and ignored HHS contracted organizations who voiced concerns. After the New York Times published a second expose, the administration announced the Department of Labor was taking action. What action? Action addressing child labor. Well, child labor is abhorrent, but how about the hundreds of thousands of children who are being smuggled in by human traffickers, who are being abused, who are being sexually abused, who are being physically abused, and whom the Biden administration has lost? This is a humanitarian crisis, and it is a man-made crisis produced by political decisions from this White House. And every American, whether Democrat or Republican, should be horrified at the state of affairs. These are incompetent people. We have incompetent people running our country, and our country has never been in more danger of World War III than it is right now. And we don't want to be the world's policemen. Under my leadership, our police and law enforcement knew that we had their back. We had their back. I gave them billions of dollars of excess military. We had military equipment in storehouses, warehouses all over the United States. And they didn't know what to do. They, they said, we can't give it to them. I said, why don't you want to? Because it will look too military. It will look too. This is a lot of it is safety equipment. You know, trucks that are armor plated and things when they go into riots. And I gave it to them, billions and billions of dollars, and it's had a profound effect, profound effect. And it was just sitting there gathering dust. It would have been valueless over a period of time. But today I want to express our profound condolences to the family of police officer Kevin Cram, who you know, who was gunned down in the line of duty last week in Algona. You know all about it, gunned down. We send them our love and our prayers, and we want every police officer across this state to know that they are heroes and they have our total support. These are great people. Our police officers are great people. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Unlike Biden, I stood proudly with our friend and ally, the state of Israel. I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And I got it built also, by the way. Would have taken 25 years for somebody to get it built. I got it built very quickly. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, something that they've been working on for 58 years. Planes would fly in every year. They'd come in and they'd leave. Nothing would happen. I got it done very quickly. And I withdrew the United States from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. The bad part is they haven't done anything with it. And now Iran's making nuclear weapons, and this guy does nothing about it. We had — that was the biggest thing I did for Israel. I ended the Iran nuclear holocaust, I call it. It was — it would have been the worst. And we were going to make a deal. We would have had a deal with Iran within two weeks after the election took place. And when that happened, uh, all of a sudden, China went back to buying oil. I prohibited China from buying oil. I said, if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to buy anything. We're not doing business with you. We're going cold turkey. A lot of people like that anyway. We're going cold turkey. They said, uh, sir, we would uh, never want to buy oil from Iran. Now they're buying millions and millions of barrels of oil, making Iran very rich. And we would have had a deal good for everybody, good for Iran, frankly. We would have had a deal. But uh, the election got in the way of that one. We did the Abraham Accords. We did so much. But we would have had a deal there, and that would have been a good one. But they've done nothing with it. They haven't done anything with it. They were such a — they had such a great negotiating position, but they had no idea. But all of that was just the beginning. Here's just some of the agenda that we will — we will immediately implement when we become the 47th President of the United States. This is a movement. <laughs> 